You're going to read together one of the most famous parables that Jesus told. It's the parable of the Good Samaritan. You may not remember how this parable starts, but it starts with a expert in the law coming to Jesus and asking, how do I inherit eternal life? And Jesus turns it back to him, as he often did, and said, well, what does the law say? And the man says, well, to love God and to love your neighbor. And then he asked Jesus another question. So who is my neighbor? I'm not sure if this expert in the law was trying to um, justify how he was treating others or who he was not considering his neighbor, but he lays this question to Jesus. And Jesus then comes with this great parable, the parable of the Good Samaritan. I think there are really four keys that we can get out of this really quick, and I want you to think about and, and wrestle together with your group. Um, but the first key is this. Generous love is based on need, not worth. The people in this story saw this stranger as exactly that, a stranger. In fact, the men that came along that should have been the ones that would stop and care for this man who'd been robbed and beaten were not. It was the least likely man who stopped. He saw the need, he had a heart for this man and took care of the need. And that brings me to the second point. If we're gonna have generous love, we're gonna feel something. See, this good Samaritan felt something. He, it, the text tells us that he had pity, or your, your uh, translation may say that he had compassion for this man. He felt something for him. He was moved to do something, and he stopped and he did something because of what he felt, while the others just walked on by. The third thing that we see about generous love is that if we really have generous love, we're going to do something. And that seems kind of obvious for those of us that are followers of Jesus, that when we see a need, we do something about it. But I, I know for a fact, because I've done it in my life, and you probably have too, there are times that we walk by just like these other guys did in the story, and we don't always see the need. And I think that brings us to the last point, and that is this, that generous love is going to come at a cost. We not only are called to do something, but it's going to come at a cost. And for the Good Samaritan, it cost his time, it inconvenienced him, it, it cost his money as he took him to an inn and paid to help take care of him. And it also cost of his talent as he took some time to bandage him up and he spent some time with him, he cared for him, he encouraged him, he was a, he was a true leader among these other men. It cost something from him. You know, one of my favorite stories is a story of Mrs. Thompson, a fifth grade teacher. And she had her class and every year she would tell her class that I treat everybody the same and I'm going to love you all the same. But this year was pretty hard for her. She had a student by the name of Teddy Stallard and Teddy was a mess. He didn't care about class. He fell asleep often. He slumped in his chair. He, he wore the same clothes multiple days. Uh, after day after day he would come not bathe for a week I mean he smelled bad he, he was a rough student and it was hard for Mrs. Thompson to love him well in fact she got to the point where she was starting to enjoy writing red check marks on his paper and putting a big F on the top of the page because he didn't really care so she was starting to not care Every year she was supposed to review every student's records and she'd save Teddy to the very end, coming close to the end of the first semester. And as she went through his records, she noticed that the first grade teacher said he was a great student, actually a joy to the rest of the class, had lots of friends. And then in second grade, she noticed that the teacher said that mom had a terminal illness. By third grade, his mom had passed away. Fourth grade, dad really didn't care anymore, wasn't in the picture. Teddy really wasn't in the picture of caring about school, and here she was in fifth grade treating this poor child as if he was worth nothing. And it came to Christmas time, and all the students had brought presents and neatly wrapped, and, and Teddy brought in a grocery bag his present. She got it out, and the kids kind of giggled because it was a bracelet with a few rhinestones missing and half a bottle of perfume. But she immediately put the bracelet on, and she sprayed the perfume on her and as Teddy left that day he said you smell just like my mom did at her last Christmas. After all the kids left Mrs. Thompson cried for an hour but that day Mrs. Thompson became a real teacher no longer just teaching arithmetic and reading and science and all the other subjects she began to love her children. In fact Teddy became one of her favorite students and he started to really excel and at the end of the year, Teddy wrote her a note saying, Mrs. Thompson, you are my favorite teacher. 
She got another letter as he graduated high school, said, still my favorite teacher, love Teddy. Four years later, she got even another letter, I've graduated college, you're still my favorite teacher, love Teddy. And then she got one more four years later and it said, still my favorite teacher, love Theodore Stollard, MD, for he had become a doctor. A few years later, he found the love of his life and decided that he was ready to get married to this love of his life. And mom had passed away, dad had passed away, and he asked Mrs. Thompson to come sit in the place of where his mother would sit for the wedding. She was honored, came to the wedding with that bracelet on and the perfume that Teddy had given her years ago as a fifth grader. As they were dancing after the wedding, Teddy whispered in Mrs. Thompson's ears, you are the reason I am the man I am today. You made a difference in my life because you believed in me. And Mrs. Thompson whispered back to him, no, it was you who made me the teacher that I am today. You made the difference in my life. I wouldn't be the teacher I was if it wasn't for you. See, that's what generous love does. It doesn't just change the person that we give the generous love to, but it changes us. And that's what Jesus wants to do. I want to challenge each and every one of us as we get together as our groups to really dig into this story together and see how we can show generous love.